Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed and this is my buddy <laughs> Maggie and we are actually going to be making over one of her dressers today. It's a dresser that has been in her family for a long time and it has not seen any love. It's been in the garage getting dusty with grass and spiders. So today we are going to give it a makeover. So if you want to see how I got this look, just keep watching. This thing is in pretty rough shape from being out in the garage for a couple of years. The top is pretty warped and messed up. It was really dirty. It had grass and spiders and some of the drawer fronts were kind of warped off from being in the humidity and the cold. So I had a lot of work ahead of me. So before I started cleaning this thing, I wanted to see if the top was salvageable. So I grabbed my orbital sander and a 150 grit sandpaper and just wanted to see what would happen if I sanded this down. I pretty quickly determined that this was laminate because I could see the pressed board underneath. And so my goal was just to get this as smooth as possible so that I could prime the top and hopefully get some paint to stick. So this is what... It looks like it looks a lot worse than when I started, but everything is smooth. So I think when I put the primer on, we'll be in good shape. The next thing I did was remove all the hardware and keep it in a baggie. Provincial dressers always have these type of handles, and I think these dressers look best with this type of handle. So I knew I was going to reuse it. So I just saved it all in a bag and set it aside. The next thing I did was remove all the drawers and start sanding them again with that 150 grit sandpaper. And I was excited to see that these were actually veneer and all this stain was stripping off really easily because I want to restain these. We're going to paint the frame and stain the drawers so I'm glad those turned out but some of them were very warped and chipping away from the drawer so I just got out some wood glue and some clamps and I just repaired all the ones that were a little floppy like this. And now it was finally time to clean this bad boy. You guys, I'm not exaggerating when I say this is the dirtiest piece of furniture I've ever worked with. But luckily I have my Dixie Belle White Lightning. I love this stuff. You just add two heaping tablespoons to a gallon of warm water and mix it up. And you're ready to clean this dirty piece of furniture. I did have to vacuum and dust a lot of grass and spider eggs out, but this is for my best friend, so it was worth it. But you guys, you gotta get this dust off and this dirt off and really prep your piece if you want your paint to adhere and last for a long time. And once I scrub it all down, I rinse it off with some clean water and then I always wipe it down with some dry paper towels as well. All right, I'm finally ready to paint. So a big game changer for me in painting is that I always put my stuff on blocks now. Your furniture can get stuck to your drop cloth and this is just, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier, but I do it on every single piece now. So I am going to be priming it with Bin Primer again and using a foam roller. You guys have seen me use this a lot in my videos recently. I know this is a great primer and I had it on hand and it was actually the only white primer I had in my closet and I wanted to get that good base coat going so that my paint would look great. I'm using a foam roller to put it on that's for doors and cabinets and then I'm using a chip brush to get in the areas that my roller can't get into. Um, this stuff is really easy to apply. You should definitely do it outside if you can or use a respirator. It is shellac based and has a very strong odor and I like to work gloves with it too because it's not easy to get off your skin. I'm just rolling out the top here to cover all that spottiness I have and seal that particle board. If you had a typical laminate dresser, you could just use Dixie Belle Slick Stick on top of here if you were worried about your paint sticking to it. I had to use a stronger primer just because of that damage I had on the top. And since I had it out, the sides were laminate as well. So I also shellacked those. And I did a couple of coats because I just wanted to be safe. I've never refinished something with this much damage before. So I wanted to get a couple coats of primer on there just to make sure that my paint was gonna be looking great. So I sand in between my coats just to smooth everything down with a 220 sandpaper. And then I get all that dust off and then I just go in and do another coat of that bin primer. And once that's dry, I'm just gonna give it a light sanding again, just to make sure that I'm starting with a smooth surface before I paint. 
Oh boy, that was a lot of prep, but we're ready to paint. So we're gonna be doing a custom color today. I'm gonna to be starting with a vintage duck egg and I'm gonna be mixing that with cotton just to mute down the color a little bit. I love mixing my paints in these Home Depot quarts. You can probably get them anywhere, but I always get mine from Home Depot. They have ratios on the back that make it really easy to mix your paint. So you can mix a little bit of paint at a time. And then when you go to mix up more paint, it's gonna be consistent because you're you're measuring it. So I'm just going to shake up my paint and measure them out and then stir them up and just make sure you stir it really well when you're mixing colors just so that everything is evenly distributed and you're going to have a consistent finish. If you're new around here you probably don't know that I water down all my paint. It's what I do. I like to work with a thinner paint so I usually add about a tablespoon of water for every four ounces, every two or four ounces. I just kind of eyeball mine and I always dampen my brush. So it's up to you if you want to thin your paint out a little bit. It will not hurt the coverage. Everybody always asks me about that. It just really makes your consistency thinner. So if you're going for a smoother look, which I am on this piece, I find it just helps me get a smoother look. Quick tip for you when you're doing a dresser like this, I like to paint the top first and then come around and do the edges here. And I'm just really, really careful and do it really slowly to not get any paint on the top because I did such hard work smoothing that out. I don't want to mess that up. And as you can see, I did not prime the front of that piece because I could tell that was real wood. So I didn't think I was going to have any issues there and I really didn't want to prime the whole thing. And the coverage turned out to be great and I didn't get any bleed through. But if I had, I could have always gone back and primed it. Um, but I took a chance and I was happy that I didn't have any issues. And one more thing I wanted to mention, it did have a lot of nicks and dings in this frame, but I didn't want to fill in all those holes. It would have taken me forever and they weren't that noticeable. So I found if I just kind of stippled my paint in there like this, and then I went back and smoothed it over, it helped me get paint in those little divots and covered them up and you couldn't really see them anymore. This paint dries really fast. So you only have to wait about an hour in between coats. My first coat, I got really great coverage, but I just wanted to cover it up a little bit more so I did a second coat over the entire piece. It's summer and it's hot here in Tennessee and I was working outside so for my top I did a little slip coat of water before I put that final coat on the top. I just find that it helps my dry time be a little bit longer while I'm getting all this paint on the top and helps it be a little bit smoother. Now I'm gonna make a wash to stain the drawers so I grabbed a clean cup and I'm gonna use a Dixie Belle driftwood and I'm gonna add some water to this to make a stain for my drawers. This is a wash technique and for my washes, I usually do a one-to-one -one ratio, one part paint, one part water, and you just mix it up really well and make sure all that paint is dissolved. It will be really, really runny. And then you just need some wiping rags. I love these Intex ones that you guys see me use all the time. And I have a shop towel and a chip brush to paint this on. So you just wanna make sure everything's really dust free since I sanded these and they've been sitting out for a while. I just wiped them down again. And then you just apply the wash all over. I like to go with the grain so that if any of those streaks end up showing up, it'll look like wood grain. So you just coat the whole thing in a very, very thin coat. And then I like to run the brush back and forth all the way so there's no stop start marks on it. And then you're gonna take that rag and you're just gonna wipe all the excess paint away and it's gonna leave a beautiful wash underneath. This is a really easy way to get a stain look without having to fool with stain. And it's kind of foolproof because when you use stain on wood, you never really know what color it's gonna turn, but with the paint, it always stays true to color, but you still have some of that wood grain coming through. I like to take a shop towel to do this final pass through just so I can make sure all that excess paint is off my piece. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. 
To seal the majority of my piece today, I'm gonna to be using Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I've only used this once before and my friend Katja always uses this and raves about it. So I wanted to try it out again. And it is so easy to put on. It lives up to its name. You just spray it over a little two foot area and then you rub it in. I got these drawers done in three minutes. It was a record. I used my Intex rags to wipe this in. It left a beautiful matte finish. It dries in 30 minutes and you can reapply as many coats as you want within an hour and it cures in six hours, which is amazing. And it's eco-friendly and water-based. So this stuff was a lot of fun to work with. And since it was so easy, I decided to use it on the frame as well. And it looked beautiful on the paint too. I decided I wanted to put a more durable top coat on the top of the piece, but this is how much of the spray wax that I used for the frame and the drawers. I decided to do the top with Gator High just to give it some more protection. I'm gonna be applying it with my Dixie Synthetic Mini Brush and putting it on a little bit of a plate and dampening my brush to work with it. This is the way I prefer to do Gator Hide is with this brush. I've used this sponge before and I'm not the best at it. Um, but just to be honest with you guys, I'm not the best at Gator Hide, but I know a lot of you want a really protective top coat. So I was doing this for you today, but if you wanna know more about Gator Hide, I would really encourage you to go find Pam at 44 Marketplace because she is an expert when it comes to Gator Hide. She sells Dixie Bell and she paints kitchens with it all the time. One thing I do know about Gator Hide is you don't want it pulling up in crevices like this, so make sure you smooth out that area because if it pulls up, it will get really yellow. I am doing two coats of Gator Hide and I'm using a very fine sandpaper, a 220, and dusting it off in between coats. So this is me putting my second coat on. And like I told you, I went and watched some of Pam's videos and she actually told me that if you don't like how shiny Gator Hide is, you can put your final coat on with the clear coat in flat. So you guys know what I'm gonna do because I love my Dixie Belle clear coat flat. I'm gonna use that as my final coat. So again, I'm just sanding with a fine grit sandpaper, removing that dust, and I'm putting my clear coat on. This is just preference. You can certainly just leave the Gator Hide on there. It's just a little bit too shiny for me, and I wanted it to match the rest of the piece that I used the Easy Peasy Spray Wax on, so this is just gonna make it look a little bit more matte and flat, and that's just the type of finish that I like. Just like with Gator Hide, watch out for those drips and runs and clean those up as you go. Okay, hang in there, we're almost done. I'm gonna do one last thing. This is Big Mama's Butter in my favorite scent, Orange Grove. And I'm just taking this and I'm wiping it on all the tracks of the drawers because I noticed they were wood. I've never refinished a piece of furniture where the tracks are wood, but I know that this wax, it's natural and it helps rejuvenate the wood um, and it helps drawers that are sticky and it smells amazing. And this piece, like I told you, was very dirty in the garage for a long time. So I wanted to give it a little upgrade in the scent department as well. And then it's really awesome. Once you clean the inside of the drawers out, you can use this in there to rejuvenate the wood on the inside. And then I just took a clean shop towel and just removed any residue. Okay, let's put this baby back together. And these drawers went in so nice having that Big Mama's butter on the bottom. They didn't stick at all and slid right in. I thought I was going to have to do something to the hardware, like gild it or something, but it honestly looks beautiful with the piece. So I just put all the hardware back in. It's finally done. This is a real trash to treasure story. Here is the after. You guys, this is amazing. This is one of my favorite makeovers in a really long time. 
I was so excited to send Maggie a pic of this and she absolutely loved it. And originally she was going to put it in a guest room, but she said she doesn't want to hide it in there. So she's thinking about using it as a hutch in her dining room. And remember that top, you guys? I thought there was no hope for this top. I wanted to give up before I even started, but look at it now. Thank you guys for joining us for today's project. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being here one more time and I will see you next time. You gotta do the double wave. Bye. Bye. <laughs>